All right, here we go. Overdrive, off and running, TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker, and up on TSN 4. Brian Hayes, the O-Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. Oh, there it is. <laughs> How are we feeling? Everyone having a good time on a Monday afternoon or what? I don't know. No. What do we got? What do we got? I mean, well, I, I want to hear. I want to hear, like, the breakdown because obviously the group chat was on fire this weekend. Yes, it was. How did it unfold? Like, also, I got to say one thing. Like, we kid around and we chirp. But I will say one thing about me and my partsy. We win with dignity and class. Yeah. These guys are so – like, when we win, we don't say anything on that stupid – Hey, stop shaking your head. <laughs> we just go to sleep and we're like, we did well. It's like kind of that's what we do. Wow. You guys are pigs. You're no, pigs. we're not. That's, <laughs> no, because you and the guy from St. Catharines, you start sending out well, the stuff pictures, that, that, that's just offside and pictures of people's shorts. And it's just like, that's your shorts. And it's disgusting. And you can't even win with class. Well, just listen, have some class. Listen, we, we may not win with class. But we lose with courage, all right? When we lose, we show up. We have the stones to show up. I was told this morning by Doogie, our good buddy Josh, for the first time all year, Luke Wilson was trying to weasel his way out of a Monday appearance on the show. <laughs> Luke has been on this show every Monday for the last 20 weeks. You can lock it in. Our audience relies on it. They love when Luke is on this show. It's a great, yeah. great segment. And somehow, when you guys are puking your guts out, like Tyler, whatever the hell his name is, Tyler Bass and Anders Carlson missing wide left, wide right, all the kickers that ruin people's weekends. When you guys don't have <laughs> no, the stones no, to you show screwed up. screwed that statement out. Not weekends, lives. Lives. <laughs> lives. Yeah, lives. <laughs> and it's. I find it very disturbing that Luke would not find time to come on. Now, it is my understanding he may try to squeeze us in now because I had to spark that, right? You can yeah. call it gutless. You can say that I'm not winning with class. What I did was inspired him to get up off the mat because you guys are regular season heroes, your playoff zeros. And Hazen, bro, I told you. Ivan Barbashev, Ivan Brothershev. I acquired him at the deadline. I said TG's going to roll in the playoffs. <laughs> Ivan We're unstoppable. Brothershev. Ivan Brothershev <laughs> is supplying a lot of great intel. The gut instinct is coming through. And it was a great weekend, man. It was a wild weekend. I was proud wow. of myself on Saturday because we had 7 a.m. hockey. Both yeah. my girls were playing 7 a.m. Put in that shift. Then we went tobogganing for like two hours. It was minus 30 out on Saturday. Yeah. I put in a two-hour toboggan shift. I came home. I said, I'm going grocery shopping. Give me a list. I want to set us up for the night, the rest of the weekend. And then I came home, and I turned that TV on as the ball was kicking off in Baltimore, and I did not move for about 36 hours. Do you know how disgusting it was to hear you? Like, you just named off stuff that dads have to do on an everyday basis. <laughs> I understand that. I'm not, I'm not like, asking for an I went to award. hockey at 7 a.m. I went to, you're yeah. like, I even went tobogganing, man. Yes. And uh, then I, like, that's a dad weekend. You got to do that stuff, and yeah, you're, like, proud of yourself. But I'll tell you what. We talked about being active and, and doing stuff by, like for our own good in our families. That was a couching weekend. Mm -hmm. If you go from the Leafs, the PGA Tour, an amateur one on what the PGA a story. Tour. What a story. And then the football, I mean... It was impossible yeah, it was, not to just sit there. It, it was, was incredible. Stop action, man. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, the Leafs had the Leafs had two games over the weekend. There were big games. Like Leafs in Vancouver is always fun. And it was yeah. it was a really fun game. Like that game on Saturday night was a really fun hockey game. It was all over the map. It was all over the map. I'm not saying it was a Picasso noodles. I'm saying no, that it was, it was a fun, fun hockey yeah, game. Yeah, it was fun. I agree. I agree. It was it was fun to watch because you didn't know what the hell was going to happen next. Right, like, I exactly. Just, like, I just, it was very unpredictable. And then, you know, and then last night, like I said, the football, the Leafs, mm -hmm. like there was so much going on. And then the group chat was on fire, and Al's yeah. brother was sending pictures of undershorts that disturbing. had been crapped in. Alvin like that, Brothership. Disturbing. Ivan Alvin Brothership. Alvin, Alvin, brother Alvin, Alvin Brothership. Brothership, <laughs> who was the best trade deadline acquisition possible. Yeah, he went over the top with that one picture. That was a really disturbing and disgusting well, picture I, that he posted. See, yeah, I, will then, I think he this. took it to Twitter, too. Oh, it's all over Twitter. Yeah, I, I will say this. Oh, you put 
was the ladle in there? Wasn't there just a ladle? There was just a picture of a ladle. <laughs> yes, I was. got a little bit overconfident with the ladle and said, anyone want this to stir up some soup? <laughs> right. And then we got clubbed the next yeah. game. Well, See, I, for what was it, hurts. four games, we were one uh, for four? Yeah, you guys went 0-2 on your picks, and, and Al's brother and I, I Alvin Brothershev and I went 1-1 uh, went one and one because we were on the box and the Lions got, them, got themselves a win, and Last night, like I will say, the, the two primetime games, with all due respect to the Baltimore game, the Detroit game, it right. was Saturday night, Green Bay versus San Francisco, and last night, Buffalo versus Kansas City, and both of them could not have been better football games, more suspenseful, um, more you know on the edge of your seat in the fourth quarter without any idea of how it was going to play out. Right. And heartbreak on both sides. The kickers again. I thought wow. your part C, my buddy, I want to clarify that, Luke Wilson. I thought he did an incredible job. He was on with Jay after the games. And he's just like sick over these kickers. Well, imagine yeah. how sick much, over them. Um, like imagine how much like weights were lifted and training is put into and coaching and scouting and traveling. And everything goes into it, and it's just like one kick, and it's game over. And I I feel like when you play a heater team like Kansas City, and you could say the same thing for the outcome of San Francisco and Green Bay, when you play a team like that that's so sound and and they know how to win, it's kind of like a U.S. Open golf course where what they always say about that golf course, Hayes, it can expose like the smallest weakness you have. Like if you're having a bit of a difficult time chipping or a bit of a difficult, it'll eat you up. And mm-hmm. it's like, that's what happens. It's like you saw Jordan Love, just that little inexperience. He made some poor throw. They exposed it. Yep. It's like they took advantage of it. And yeah. a kicker that if you don't know that he's he's got the ladle in his hip, <laughs> waiting for it that, that that gets exposed and you got oh. no chance to win man and it's like you, you saw it it's like those small things like imagine people like trying to go after josh allen or saying they're a bunch of losers like uh, i well, didn't like the throw near the end of the game that's what i was gonna say doesn't the throw allen at the end of the game bother the throw yes. i thought there was a crossing route and they pointed it out on the yes. television it's like See, you could have had make the first that throw he's got to yeah. make that throw yeah, that's where I, I keep, you know, obviously I'm, I'm tracking it and you keep hearing like, okay, yeah, you can crap on the kickers because absolutely, but mm-hmm. there were some missed opportunities there where Allen could have put them to bed, correct? Uh, absolutely. And that's what sticks out is that Josh Allen, you know, he runs for two touchdowns. He was, he was very accurate. Although you look at his statistics, weird statistics, like a lot of throws behind the line of scrimmage. Right, like a lot of throws into the flat, a lot of checkdowns, effectively. That you know, and he, he listen. The one bomb he threw to Stephon Diggs was perfect. That was on the money. That was like a sixty-yard throw, and it was absolutely right on the money. It was what is it, Uncle Rico or Cousin Rico? He threw that over the mountains, <laughs> and it landed right in Diggs' breadbasket, and he couldn't catch it. He catches yeah. that. That becomes one of those historic Josh Allen completions that maybe they punch in six there, they go on to win the game, and that's what we're talking about for the rest of his career. But the fact of the matter is, in the end, he didn't beat Mahomes again. Wow. Like that's yeah. it's you know, there's so many excuses. And and I know it because we've been on that side of it so many times. Right? We've talked about it with the Maple Leafs, we've talked about it with the Blue Jays, with the Raptors at different times, where it's always like, Man, that guy played great, but he didn't win. Allen didn't win again against Mahomes because Mahomes made the throws he had to. And yes, Tyler Bass, he missed that kick. That was going to tie the game, not win the game. You that was going right. to tie well, the game. As soon as Mahomes got the ball, he was just going to win it. Exactly. With two know. timeouts left and a minute 30 on the clock, there was no way Mahomes wasn't going to carve yes. down the field and end up winning that game. I think He's everyone becoming believes like Brady, that. Where it's like you put him in that situation, it's almost like... How could you possibly have counted that out? All season, everyone was like, there's just not enough weapons. Kelsey's getting old. The guy's just a winning machine. Yes. He, yeah. he just steps up and he gets the job done. Well, exactly. I, and yeah. and that was the thing with Allen. Like, you know, they get out of the two-minute warning and he, he starts throwing it down the field as opposed to just moving the chains, moving the field, and putting yourself in a position where maybe you can win it or tie it with no time left. And the the... The throw to Shakir, which is what you're referencing, Noodles, that was the first play coming out of the timeout. I think that was the second down. That's just underthrown. Like, it was just blatantly underthrown. And I'm I'm sorry, I don't believe for a second Mahomes would miss that throw. But 
Like Mahomes, are you, are you I think would make that Are you talking about the guy throw. in the end zone that he was trying to throw it to? Yes. I get that, it but they yards. illustrated, Tony Romo illustrated, he's like, there was a crossing route right in front of him, 10 yards for the first down. Exactly. It's like, make yeah. that throw. Exactly. But and that's and my just point. take a chunk out of it, but he went for the home run and he didn't get it. And that's the whole point. That's where Allen, I don't believe, is immune from criticism, I guess is yeah. what I'm saying. Yes, I thought he, he played Great. He ran for 72 yards, two touchdowns. He made a bunch of throws. Yeah, He's he was... a beast. He's a great player. Everyone loves Josh Allen. That's not the point. Mahomes did it again. And when he had a chance to win it late, instead of making the throw, which I believe he could have because Shakir was wide open, instead right. he could have gone underneath, like you said, I think it was Diggs who was wide open, and he didn't hit him. So at some point, Allen's got to have some blood on his hands. And in the end, it's Kansas City – Mahomes for a sixth straight year going to the championship game in the AFC. Um, Andy Reid. Andy, Andy Reid again. I thought Andy Reid's game plan was basically perfect yesterday. Yeah. And it was going to be a close ball game. Everyone knew it was coming. And listen, that kicker is going to need security detail to get out of Buffalo. Oh, like it's, My heart hurts for him. I do like too. I actually, it's awful. Is it, now, this, did Buffalo remind me, did they have a wide right somewhere yes. Scott else? Scott Norwood in the Super Bowl to win the game. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean to guy, laugh. Like, like at I'm not least trying miss to, laugh. It to the left. Yeah, well, well that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, isn't history repeat itself there? Because that's what was trending. And then right away, was it somebody put in the group text or somebody else? Maybe Frankie sent a note saying like, "Check on Carlo." Because like, I did. I always do it as soon as the game ended. I Facetimed him, and I, he's <laughs> just he's leaned up and he's in this like storage <laughs> unit with his Italian buddies, and they've got a flat screen in there. Oh, that's and the, he's, just down he, the road here. The, I, I don't cement, know what it is. Company. I don't know what it is, but he was so – I was just like, how are you feeling? He just shook his head, and he's like, it's the Bills, man. It's, I, I'm just used to I it. Know. It's like he was immune to it. Well, that's But let me ask you, Hayes, thing, if man. you were a Carlo or a Bills fan, would it make any difference if he hooked it left as opposed to No, right, of course right? not. <laughs> I mean, he missed the kick. It, ultimately, it's the same thing with the Packer game on Saturday night. Carlson missed the kick, and there was great reporting in that game. While either while he was setting yes. up the kick or right after, they were like, "We're going with this guy. He scares the hell out exactly. of us, but we're throwing him out there." Like Lafleur said on the record, <laughs> "I close my eyes us. and pray every time this guy steps on the field." So that is terrifying. terrifying. That you can't trust in that position, such a critical position. But again, like it's 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 the most respected and least respected position ever. It, really, it's in the pro an- sports. It's got to be. You know what it is, Noodles? It's an anthem singer. That's what it is. If they do their job, no one pays attention. You right. only get focused on when you chop up the lyrics or when you miss wide right or yeah. wide left or whatever it happens to be. And we saw it yeah. multiple times over the weekend, but Carlson oh, on Saturday last night. I don't disrespect the anthem singers, but it's a little bit more of an important <laughs> well, than I, the anthem I, I'm not saying it's guy, the equivalent. It, I'm not saying it's the equivalent in terms of importance. I'm using it as an analogy. The thought, the thought process, exactly. Yes. Like we only talk about, there is once in a while, there is great anthem singers where you point it out, but for the most part, it's their job just to sing. Right. And, and and same thing. Kickers, you expect them to get the three points. And if they don't, people are, are noticing. Exactly. And, and, that's, and, and we always talk about it. Luke can talk about it. Like, those guys are on an island when it comes to the team anyways. Oh, They're not yeah. on the offense. They're on a – like, it's just a weird – people just leave them alone. Well, so I, I felt bad for him, man. It's I the Parcells bad. take, right? He's like, I don't need him to play. I just need him to kick, right? Yeah. Like, they – honestly, people <laughs> in the NFL and in football, they don't look at kickers – even as athletes, they're just go out there and make the kick. And it's one thing if you're asking the guy to kick a 60-yarder into the wind. These right. are like 41 yards. Those are chip shots now in Dude, the NFL. It was downwind, too, for that uh, Exactly. Guy. And, and pointed out, he's like, this is downwind. It's like And right off his boot, you're like, that's gone. Like, it wasn't a doink. <laughs> yeah. It was like, that thing is a shank, no, man. It he was missed a that. slice shank driver. It was, I, like, I wonder, it was right at, going right. Yeah. I wonder at what point did, like, you know how we all know, especially when we played, like, when you screwed something up, mm. I wonder when he knew. Like, the minute it came I off his foot. I think like, off his foot. foot. Yeah. The minute it leaves his foot, he's like, I missed that. No, right, I, I think shank. it's like a golf shot. Like, you, you know, like, the striker knows when you hit one off the heel or the hosel. Like, yeah. you, you know it on impact you're like that is missed and oh. yeah it's sickening for bills fans I, I, and I, my heart hurts for him yeah oh. it is it's awful and and like it's different than saturday night carlson packers were playing with house money they're young love was looking very jittery in the second half and in the fourth quarter 
even if that's tied going to overtime, I don't know what he's got left. Like, he looked like a kid for the first time in, in a long time, Jordan Love. The Bills right. have been building towards this forever. That was your chance. You got Kansas City at home. You look at it, they didn't turn the ball over last night. Like, no turnovers. You're at home. You're playing a clean game. Not a lot of penalties. They you got, got that a, break when they would lost the football. Fumble through the, the end zone yes, for a touchback. Yeah. Like, a lot of things broke their way, and they still lost. And that's why it's sickening if you're a Bills fan because you're like, what are we supposed to do? This guy Mahomes is 28 years old. He's not going anywhere. Like he's just – and guess who's coming back too in the future? Joe Burrow is going to be back at some point. Like it's yeah. just – it's – that was your chance and they wow. they couldn't find a way to, to win it last night. Who, so. had the, who had the best time last night? It looked like Jason Kelsey to me. Like that guy was enjoying life. I would say he was enjoy- – that's why that whole shot – like yes, Taylor Swift was front and center, but I think he's a lot the, of it was – He's in the background. Yeah. Crushing beer with no tarp on. They're looking for Kelsey as much as – that's why, you know, like the conspiracy <laughs> theorists are going to say – the NFL wants Kansas City there because oh. of Taylor Swift, and I think there's probably some truth in that. For sure. But they also want that but guy. what are you talking about? Cons- you think there's conspiracy theories in sports, man? I didn't say I'm a conspiracy you theorist. You are. No, I'm not. I said I'm that I'm more the, of one than he is. The and I, conspiracy I, theorist. I just so you don't... think there's some people out there that think they just want Taylor Swift to be a part of the Super Bowl? Well, let me clarify something. I think if they could choose, they would love that. Yes, Absolutely. that doesn't mean they're going to. Like, the games are not in question in terms of integrity. They play the games. Whoever wins goes on. If Baltimore wins next week, they go to the Super Bowl. But, yes, do I think Roger Goodell and company and CBS, who has the Super Bowl, would love to see Taylor Swift front and center and Jason Kelsey with no shirt off in Vegas? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, I think I, that's I, the I truth. find the commenting on Taylor Swift saying, oh, they're showing her in the box, like – the guy's dating the most famous person in the world for crying out loud. Like, right. What do you yeah. like? What do you think is going to happen? It, it, and it, she yeah. she keeps going to these football games, and they're going to put her on TV. So deal with it. I'm telling you, my eleven year old daughter watched it. Conspiracy theory. Like, come on. My eleven year old daughter watched it and said to me this morning, "Daddy, I saw Taylor Swift twice last night." Mm-hmm. And my my six year old goes, "That's because he was against the Kansas City Chiefs, her boyfriend." Like he, my six year old knows the whole story. Yeah, he's dating Taylor Swift. He knows that. Like that's that's where they're 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 actually getting a new fan base, like a different fan base. Now that might go away right. if he retires, if she. But right now the Swifties are engaged. I'm telling you, and if that gives them two million more viewership, they're getting it. The and Swifties what, are engaged, and that's what's got to sting on top of everything. Is in Buffalo, they were goofing on Swift. They're goofing on Travis Kelsey, and this guy shows up and goes for two touchdowns. Yeah, and they walk out of there with a victory, and it's just it's heartbreaking. For the Bills. Yeah. So, yeah, Luke is allegedly coming up later in the hour. We'll see if he actually decides to accept the invitation because Timo and Wilson are getting dummied by Hazenbro. Um, and, you know, we got a lot on the docket today. Ray's coming up, too. Ray Ferraro will join us at nice. 5. There's a lot going on in the NHL. Corey Perry signed in Edmonton. Patrick Waugh's back in the game. I know. Like, that- Sweet Lou just, he loves out of the blue just gonging a coach and saying, I don't like what's going on here and it's going to change immediately. Yeah, he <laughs> does. And it's, it, you know what? Like, I don't know if you saw Patrick's media afterwards. Like, I thought it was quite genuine. Like, this is a guy, I don't know if he shot himself in the foot in Colorado, but do you remember he left on bad terms? Like, this guy walked out on the team, took his net and went home in late August, and they threw Jared Bednar in there, and Jared Bednar got 40, what, 47 points that year? Like, it was a, he left on a really bad, bad terms. And I don't think he got back in until he had to kind of sort through it. Like, I don't know how you guys feel, but, like, that there was a bad taste in people's mouths about Patrick Waugh. Like, you know, you hire this guy. Is he going to do what he did in, in Colorado? And I think he's kind of come full circle. And good for him, listening to his comments last night. Like, it was... Yeah, I think the fact that Bednar is still there and thriving is incredible. Well, like, exactly. It's incredible. He won a cup. Like, you look at Pascal Vincent this year in Columbus. That's been a disaster and it's not surprising and I don't even think it's his fault he he basically was flung into the same situation that Bednar was because right. Waugh left different circumstances but he just said I'm out of here and Babcock they fired right before camp and Bednar for him to not only solidify things there but win there and get extensions there and have 
a legacy in Colorado is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, I do wonder if what Lou was doing was partially looking at his own team and looking at you know Lambert as a coach and saying it was a mistake and it's not working. So I want to change it. And there's Patrick Waugh. And how much of it was, I'm um, here in Ottawa might be looking at him and you know, may, maybe the Leafs, I don't know, maybe they'd look at him or another. Like, right. were, were they, was Lou like, I got to get to this guy quick because someone else is going to come in and hire Patrick Waugh. I would um, think so. You're right. I think like, he just thinks about it and, and makes an assessment where he needed some passion, he needed some jump, and he needed a guy that was fiery. And he sat down with Waugh and he's, I don't know, probably said, what do you think about this? And as soon as he said, yeah, I'll do it, mm -hmm. he pulled the trigger. Yeah. That's the way Lou operates. Lou fired a coach, I think, a week before the playoffs nine, started. Was it nine games left or something? I think or they went on to left. win a cup, too, that year, yeah, didn't they? He, he, he put himself as the coach, didn't he? And he fired like he, he had. Did all, he's done all kinds of crazy stuff. Fired Robbie Vitoric before the playoffs. Yeah. Gone behind the bench himself. Yeah. Brought back Larry Robinson three or four different times. John McClain, Jersey. same John thing. John McClain. Like, and he just like, he just fired this guy. He's like, I don't like where this is going, and I'm not watching it anymore. Mm -hmm. And he, that's his attempt to try to save the season. Well, I listen, I, I admire the fact that he's always in a position where he wants to get better people, right? Or if he feels like it's just not working, it's not even that Lambert's a bad guy, McClain was a bad guy, or whatever. It's like, this isn't working. This isn't what I envisioned. Just didn't like the look of it, I Hayes. don't like the look of it. There's someone better. I'm going to go get him. And, you know, we'll see if it ends up working with Patrick Waugh. Um, Corey Perry was introduced to the Edmonton media today, did not say anything about what happened in Chicago. Um, I'd have to believe the Oilers are aware of it. The Oilers were obviously prepared to accept, you know, his history and what he's been through and what he did to get terminated in Chicago. Um but without knowing the details of all that, I think if you just simply talk about the acquisition, I, I don't see any downside for Edmonton. I mean, the guy comes in on a deal that's, what, seven hundred and fifty grand, seven yeah, seventy five. dollars doesn't yeah. work. You bury him or get rid of him, right? Like yeah. if he steps in and it's it doesn't work, doesn't transition properly, bad vibe in the room, whatever, see you later. The only negative thing is when you're doing that, the rumors are starting. Somebody in the locker room amidst the 13-game win streak is like, they're looking around and they're like, one of us is out of here if this is true. And ultimately, I think Ernie got yes, put on did. waivers. So th that's kind of the unknown. And guys are like, oh, am I going? Some of the bottom six guys are like, what the hell is going to happen to me? Because someone's got to get out of here. And then you're just wondering, is anything going to resurface regarding this issue in Chicago? That's the risk that's involved here. If something else pops up where it's, that only didn't happen in Chicago. So there is risk there, but I think that Kenny Holland would do the work and figure it out and say, look, man, is this a one shot deal? And we're moving on here. And they, they brought him in there. Yeah. I, I gonna, agree. It'll be a good play. Good fit for them. I agree. I think this is minimal risk and nothing but upside really, mm -hmm. because the, he's a hell of a player. He's a pain in an ass, pain in the ass to play against. He's got experience. He's won a heart. He's won a cup. Like this guy's won at every level. Now, I, I did see something earlier where I don't know. Edmonton fans are like, do we want this guy to come in? He's he's been to the finals three, wasn't it three times in a row and, and lost? lost right? yeah. yeah. So that was kind of the joke. But I don't I don't think there's any downside when you've got a guy of that ilk on that contract. And if it doesn't work, you can make it go away. Like you're trying to add to your team. Like I, I was sitting there thinking. Do you think the Leafs would have been in on that? Like I, I God, was adamant about that. But they could use like they yeah. could use a guy like that. Well, big, hard to play against, farther down in your lineup. And look what's going on with Ryan Reeves now. Now Reeves yeah. is complaining about his situation on the record, doing interviews saying that he's been healthy for weeks, and yet the Leafs have him on IR and nothing he can do. This is going to boil over. Like this was a guy you were bringing in for the energy, good guy yeah. in the room. Fun guy, DJ, and now he's not getting his way. Albeit, there, there could, you know, it's kind of strange the way IR works, where the team effectively has control over it. Is my understanding? It's not like right. long-term IR where the player has to sign off on that. There's no um, other way to describe it than it didn't work. It's a, like when, it's a mess. Exactly. When he was out on the ice, they couldn't keep it out of their own net, and it wasn't working, and it didn't fit, and. I don't know how that ends. I, I really don't. But the one thing is I don't blame him for complaining about it because he wants to play. Mm -hmm. He's there to play. It didn't work in Toronto, and I don't know what happens to him, but I, wow. I never like seeing a guy just sitting back saying, oh, it's so nice not playing. 
least he cares that he's not well, playing. You're, yeah, you're right. But, but whether it's going to be here, but, or I don't know where the hell he is going to play. But it doesn't look like it's going to be here. But here's the the distinction is that he's on IR. That's the point. It's not that he's just a healthy scratch. Like that. Right. That's what makes this, I think, somewhat sticky, flammable. Yes, yeah, exactly. Sticky. Like it's one. Yeah. If you're a healthy scratch every night, I agree with what you just said. Oh, that it's. Hey, I want to play, and I, I'm waiting for it, and I'm healthy. I'm ready to go. You know, I'm not happy. Blah blah blah. That's great. This is the lead. Like Sheldon came in after and was like, nah, he's still working his way through an injury. Like, this is a weird kind of. <laughs> this, was, IR, this was the Kadri on Lupul. Yes. Kadri on Lupul going, yeah, Loops is back. It's amazing. <laughs> right. No, no, flying out there. <laughs> flying out there. So, this is the politics of, you know, wow. the roster spot. The, he still counts against the cap because he's not on long term IR. But. This one's going to get sticky because they invested in him three years at one point three million. That alone, I'm sure, made the Leafs believe at a minimum you're just always going to be positive and happy and do what you're told. And if you right. don't play, you don't play. But obviously, Ryan Reeves is not, you know, in a position to accept that, which he's entitled to. I'm not saying that he should be happy or whatever, but now you're on the record saying right. I'm healthy and I I've, I've been healthy for weeks and I want to play. And the coach is coming out saying, no, you're not. You're still on IR because we've decided you're still on IR effectively. Yeah. And this is going to get sticky because you can't have this from a guy who's your 13th forward. You can't like you can't have a loud malcontent that's not playing for you that you've invested in simply so that he brings positive energy to your room. Like that's yeah, why he was right. here to be tough, hit, fight, but also be a good, you know, a good guy, upbeat guy, Mr. Energy, change the vibe around the team. If he's unhappy or sulking or whatever, if that's what's happening, they, they I, I don't see how there can be a future here. Like, this has got to eventually get to a point where they just say we're moving on. Yeah, they've got to sort it out. The, the unfortunate part is how does it? How does it? Like, where is the pathway to sort this, this situation out moving forward? Does he come back to the roster? Does he get waived and go down? Like, you know, there's a – No one's claiming. And ugly. Yeah, yeah, no one, no one's going to claim him. I know, him. I mean, but they, my point is he got – two and a half years left on his deal. So right. he would have to go to the Marlies. They'd have to chew a little bit of cap, but then that's a situation. You want a 36-year-old guy who's disgruntled to go to the Marlies. Oof. That's not a good situation. Like this has just been, I don't know. I mean, the, the second they signed him, it was a, it was a massively polarizing move. Yep. But And we were all in favor of it on this show, so don't say anything I, else I was not in terms of him playing the game, not for a second. I, I remember adamantly saying he will not play in the playoffs and they're spending money on a guy that's not going to play. What I did say, and I stand by this, was I thought he'd be entertaining. I said it'll be fun, he'll hit, he'll fight, it'll be fun to watch play. But I did. I was not a supporter of the signing. Well, I, it I, doesn't matter now, but it's no, now no, they're stuck. We're not with it. taking receipts here, but I, yeah, I was in support of it. I'm like, he's a guy because in the past I've always seen him be kind of a guy that gets flies up and down the wing and hits and it, it just didn't work. I don't mm -hmm. know how else to explain it. Yeah. It didn't work. Yeah, I, I think it should was... have been a one year deal. In fact, it was a three year deal at the even even if you appreciated him coming in and what the fact that they gave him three years, no one could explain that. Like nobody. Correct. That that was outrageous. But you know, a one-year yeah, deal, like him coming in, him being who he is, that's fine. Alvin Every, Barbashev's, Alvin Brothershev's tweet or messages were outrageous. Yes. Yeah, he's put himself Tell him to just tone it down, and he's a weasel, okay. too. He, like, disappears, <laughs> and then he's just, <laughs> yeah. Like, he just, he's hiding, and then he just, I don't know, right. talk to him. All right. Lurking in the shadows. I'll have a word with him. All right, <laughs> Luke may or may not be coming up. Ray Ferraro's coming up. Ray, just after 5 o'clock. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. If you smell what the Win Wilson is cooking. All right, here we go. Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time, which means Alvin Barr, brothers Chev, and myself are right in our element, right? We build to peak in the playoffs. We don't peak in like week eight, week nine, regular season stuff. And today, I was shocked when I got the news this morning that Luke Wilson was not going to join us. The first Monday in like 20 weeks. And I guess we poked the bear enough where he's willing to join us. I guess he's landed. He's out in BC for some reason. Are you running and hiding? What are you doing out there? <laughs> Listen, all I asked Doogie to do was bump it to tomorrow. And this is what I get. I just landed off a five-hour flight. I'm sitting in the airport, and I've got to get on here and get at verbally abused. For what I want to say, it's my own fault, my bad picks. I'm still confused 
how you're talking about how great you and Al's brother have been. You went one and one this weekend. Right. I'm the one who's at fault here. Me. Okay. Okay, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of time left. We've still got games. The Super Bowl is a bonanza of picks. There's there's the spread. I got total, a feeling it props. could be even Steven going into the Super Bowl, where it could mean the Super Bowl of overdrive as well. I think that's wow. exactly what's going to happen. So it's all good. I don't need to poke the bear. I want to win with class. That's what Al's brother and I, that's wow. the motto we no, live by. No, that's the thing you haven't been, though, because, Luke, you're on those group chats, and Al's brother put a picture of, of soiled underwear that on there disgusting. And, and took a shot at you guys. They, they weren't winning not, with class, were they? It, no, they were not. And to, and to add on to this, Noodles, thank you for bringing that up. Yes. As I'm on the plane today, I sign on to Wi-Fi, I see a tweet roll through that's Al's brother calling me a gutless coward. <laughs> with a <laughs> 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 I'm like, sitting here squeezed on a plane seat. I'm just like, you got to be kidding me right now. I text Doogie. I said, buddy, I'm landing at 415. Get me on a 430. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we appreciate that. You fly planes. We ride cruises, man. It's all good. Just two different lifestyles on this show. But when you look back on last night, let's go backwards. Uh, obviously, that's the game people are going to remember, Bills versus Chiefs. I think people are trying to get a read on Josh Allen's role in all this. Like, was he great? Was he perfect? Does he deserve some blame? Like, wh where do you stand on, an, uh, like, analyzing how the Bills found a way to lose last night? Okay, so uh, I understand that he didn't have crazy numbers, and this is what I want to say to the people that are dogging Josh Allen. It's insanely ridiculous. It's ridiculous on all counts. I don't know if you heard his post-game presser, but he, and they're like, you know, it seemed like you were thrown underneath a lot. And he looked at the, the reporter and was like, well, when they're playing soft zone, you got to take what the defense gives you. This Chiefs defense is very good. They've been very good all year. Josh Allen methodically moved the ball down the field. Okay, This man ran for two TDs, ran for a bunch more yards, Threw for 186, no turnovers, very efficient in his throws, and everyone wants to dog him. And it's funny to me how this, these narratives take place because he almost had the exact same numbers as Lamar Jackson when it comes to total yards. And Lamar had one extra TD, one more, he had a, one more throwing TD. Okay? And you sit here and, you, and you're like, all right, so Lamar rushes for 100 and throws for 150 and is accountable for four. I think Josh threw for like 186 and ran for 72 and is accountable for three, and all of a sudden it's like, no, it's Josh Allen's fault. And I'm like, it's not, like, what more do you want the man to do? And again, even you look at the last throw to Khalil Shakir, and everyone's like, why didn't he throw it underneath? Well, he's reading the defense. It's the best a man's ever, like, I've seen him go through progressions and make the right decisions. That throw, it's the middle of the field open, he's got the beater there, and he gets hit and can't follow through. It's not a big hit, but it's enough to shorten the throw up a little bit. Bam, that's an incomplete pass. Next thing I'll say, and I'll get done with the Josh Allen rant, and as you know, you all three of you know, I'm not a big Bills guy. Mm -hmm. But if Diggs catches the football, you know, that's a TD. And, I, yeah. yeah, it's a tough play, whatever, but it's like the idea that this is somehow Josh Allen's fault it, it makes my stomach turn because the guy played incredibly well, clean, efficient football all night. Partsy, I heard you talking about the kickers with Jay. Like, do you got to gas that guy in Buffalo? Because it's tough going back in the locker room, isn't it? Or how is that situation handled? Like, Or is it just, ah, welcome back, good try, buddy. I just can't <laughs> see it being like no. that. Not for me. You know, oh dog, it's funny because some guys might be like that. And I joke on Jay about how I can't stand kickers, but I really can't. And not personally. <laughs> but uh, again, I, I'm trying to equate it to, I, I'm trying to equate it to hockey. But there's nothing like it. Again, like you sit here, look at Josh Allen last night. Look at the Bills team in general. I mean, their whole defense has been decimated by injuries, getting absolutely bloodbath. And it's like you got guys blowing ACLs, tearing Achilles, popping shoulders. It's a complete war out there, and then a 183-pound kicker comes in and misses a kick <laughs> that should, you know, ruins people's and lives. A parts. Windy. And 100 percent. And like I understand the narrative that maybe Patrick Mahomes comes down and and, and, sc and scores, and I get that. But as a player, I'd rather that. I'd rather be like, you know what? 
Mahomes got the ball last, and he got us. In my opinion, the best player of our generation. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's you can tip your cap, but now to say you don't even have a chance, and like I said, hopes and dreams, jobs, all this stuff relies on a guy that just—it's the nature of the beast. You know, it's it's like, and it drives me insane. That, and I thought Anders. I mean, Hayes. I'm sure you're upset. Anders Carlson jammed up the Packers. Yeah, he did. You so know, if you're seeing these guys back in the locker room, you're like, don't even come I'm near not me. Talking don't to even. <laughs> No, it's sickening. I know. It's sickening. Those. I'm not. You know, I know noodles. You're laughing, but like, I wouldn't talk to him in the first place. That's the next thing. It's, it's not like, okay, it's, you guys. I'm being dead serious. It's not like these guys are really practicing with us. You know, you talk about a kicker. What do they do during the day? You know, or we would joke in college that like after special teams period, which for most teams is the first thing of practice, that they go to the other field and get their golf clubs out. So like, well, we're getting screamed at. I'm getting screamed at by Matt Patricia one year. You know, just absolutely roasted like all of us are. Run into the ground. This guy's doing bicep curls in the in the in the weight room. And it's like, like, and God forbid, God forbid, it's a pregame. And I see one of these guys on the chiropractic table. There might only be three chiropractors. He better not be on there. You know what I'm saying? We got real <laughs> dudes who are going out to war out here. I love the idea of the I'm, kicker on the table, like <laughs> stopping the quarterback from getting treatment. Well, dude, it's like, hey, if you see a young guy, when I came in the league, it was kind of old school. If you were a rookie and getting treatment from a guy and some old grizzled bastard with a beard with gray hair was sitting there, <laughs> like he would want to punch you in the face. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the truth. Yeah, I hear you. Like, that's how the locker room is. And, and again, you said it, like, jobs, lives are on the line here. And, like, yes, with Patrick Mahomes, maybe we think he would score. What happens if Mahomes makes a mistake, you know? What happens if Vaughn Miller somehow turns back the clock and makes a play there and forces a fumble? What happens if McCole Hardman has a catch and decides to fumble for the third time? You never know. You never know. And it, it's tough, again, if you're a Bills fan right now, I would have rather Mahomes – Drove the field and beat us, and mm-hmm. have a kicker miss a somewhat of a easy kick with Luke Wilson. All right, let's imagine the impossible happens here, and the Lions win the next two games and win the Super Bowl. Who do you think will be the face of that Super Bowl? Will it be Jared Goff or Dan Campbell? To me, it's Dan. To me, it's Dan. But you can make an argument for both. And I love Jared Goff. I mm-hmm. love the story. I love the way he's playing. So this is not a shot at Jared Goff, but. Again, last night I was talking about, you know, it was on Jay's show, and it was like that game for a minute, you know, looked like it was going to be a, a field goal, last-minute drive ordeal. And it's 17-17, 13 minutes left in the game, and they go and turn to Jameer Gibbs. And Jameer Gibbs just, I think four of the five plays they ran, absolutely dashes his team. One was a catch, couple runs, 31-yard touchdown, boom. Next drive, they get a stop. Next drive, they, they break it open with another TD, and the big plan out was the pass that Jameer Gibbs. And why I say it's Dan Campbell is when they drafted Jameer Gibbs, the narrative was don't pay running backs. Don't pay Saquon. Don't pay Taylor in Indianapolis. Don't do any of this stuff, right? Because running backs aren't worth it. Dan Campbell does things his own way. And I'm not saying there's only one way to win, but clearly he's rewriting another way to win here. This man makes outrageously aggressive calls. I mean – Three weeks ago, he went for two points to win the game on the seven-yard line. (laughs) (laughs) It was insane. Well, it goes back to the first press conference, too, where he said, we're going to bite you in the kneecap, and then when you get up, we're going to bite your kneecap again. And the football world was freaking out, and there were reporters saying, you left another coach on the sidelines to hire this animal with these comments. So it's coming full circle where people are like, maybe he can coach. Yes, and he, like I said, he drafted Jameer Gibbs 12th overall, and now he just laughs at all of us who might have been like, what are they doing? Because, like, what am I doing? Oh, we're in a tie ball game to go to the NFC Championship? Here's my 12th overall pick. Enjoy this. And the guy rips off probably 75 all-purpose yards in the last 10 minutes of the game, and it's ridiculous. He looks like the best player on the field in that quarter, I'm saying. Right. So – my thing is, like, Dan has been so unconventional, unconventional with this. The, the press conferences, the decisions. I mean, McDermott 
all of a sudden out of nowhere yesterday thought he was Dan Campbell and could fake a punt on his own 30. Only Dan Campbell can do that. <laughs> so I think Dan is the story here just be, of the two of them just because it's so outrageous and it's working and it's fun. Again, does the Cinderella story end this week? Oof. You know, I think most people would say that, but you never know. Well, exactly. I mean, you look at Saturday night. I thought Green Bay Green Bay had control of that game all night. Like, they had that game, and they threw it away. Credit credit the Niners. They did what they had to. The Niners are such a good team. They're so talented. They were at home. They did enough to find a way to win, and now they regroup. And I, I think they'll be better this Sunday against Detroit. But we're still having the Brock Purdy conversation where Purdy was not good all night until he had to be. Right, he made the right throws. He made the right reads. He made the right calls when but do they you needed win with him most. That, Hazy? Well, do that's you... the question. Like you know, you, you beat Green Bay, the youngest team in the league, who made mistakes. They missed a big kick. Love threw two picks in the second half, and he finally looked like a kid. He kind of got away from him. The moment I think was too big for Jordan Love. I don't know. Maybe the same thing applies to Detroit. Maybe it applies to the Super Bowl. Like, is there anything Purdy can do between now and the end of the road here, where people are going to give him? flowers or is the jury just officially in you either appreciate Purdy for what he is or you don't think he's good enough uh see and it's funny Hayes Brock Purdy is a guy to me that just gets a very very unfair you know judgment and what I mean by that is this is this man's second year second year in the NFL okay he's gone in two NFC championship games he's never lost a playoff game which he finished. The only playoff loss he has is the game he was injured and couldn't throw. In that game, and I'm not saying that he outplayed him. There's a lot that goes into the stats. But in that game, Jordan Love's quarterback rating was 44.6. His, the other non-ESPN rating was 77. Okay, And Brock Purdy, quarter, QBR was 61.9. Passer rating, 86.7. So statistically, he played... Much better than Jordan Love. Now, if you watched it, I'll be the first guy to say, he missed a lot of throws, you know, and it was an accuracy thing. And the thing that I am, like, so confused about is all of a sudden, you know, you look at it, and he starts the game with a glove on. It's pouring rain the entire night. He takes the glove off. Clearly, he's having a hard time gripping the football. Okay, And on paper, he outplays Jordan Love, and the narrative is Brock Purdy can't get it done. Like, Again, I'm not saying that he played great. Mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you, I'm I'm not saying that. But my my thought is like, well, what's going to happen next week when he plays a pass defense that is not good? Last games gave 348 to Baker Mayfield, gave up 36. This is the Lions defense 367 to Matthew Stafford. I believe it was 396 to Nick Mullins. Mm-hmm. Okay, and two weeks before that was 411 to Nick Mullins. So. If the weather's fine, I expect Purdy to go out here and play well. And it's unfortunate because the media has backed us into a narrative where even if he plays well, it's not going to be him. It's going to be, oh, you know what? He has too many players around him. Mm-hmm. And, and I just sit here and I'm like, it's unfair to the kid. Okay, he's not Patrick Mahomes. Like, I'm not comparing it. He's not Josh Allen. He's not. But to sit here and be like, this guy's trash or he's going to be the reason they lose is, I think, a ridiculous idea at this point. Well, we only got three games left, which sucks. I mean, the bittersweet nature of this is Sunday's going to be amazing. The Super Bowl will be amazing. But uh, we're moving towards the end of the road. And um, I credit you. You found a way to come on. Doogie did everything he could to make sure that it happened. We appreciate Doogie (laughs) reaching out, forcing you to come on. And uh, listen, the playoffs, sometimes people are programmed. For the playoffs, sometimes you program for the regular season, but I'll never forget that you found a way to come on today. I appreciate that, and we'll do this again uh, later in the what? week. Hey, can I say one thing real quick? This is the parts yo dog. I need to own the situation. I'm not going to be like our rivals who make excuses. I've been very, very poor in the playoffs, and we look like we're in bad shape, but we're not dead, Partsy. Yes, and I'm bringing and heat this weekend. Mm-hmm. We need a little help. I'm not going to lie. We need them to mess up, but we got control we can control. 
I know you and Rod are probably going to take care of the draft this week, and I'm going to come through with some good information, and yeah. we're going to we're going to put the pressure on. We're going to fight to the end. And we're pro athletes, and we get motivated. And when a guy sits in the lobby of a Holiday Inn in St. Catharines in his underpants selling <laughs> hockey cards and calls us gutless weasels and cowards, we respond. <laughs> yeah, I am a little worried That's about that. bulletin board material. I don't. Yes, I might that have to speak is bulletin with board material. Alvin Brothership. I might have to have a word with him. All right, yeah. Luke. We'll do it later in the week. Thank you, buddy. Cheers. There's Luke Wilson, live from beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. The home of, uh, I think it was Hockey Day, wasn't it, out in Victoria? thought I saw. Yeah, it was out there, yep. I know Tux was out there. Lanny McDonald was out there. Oh, yeah. They had everybody. They were all out there having all a great time. Everyone yeah. having a good time out there. Um, all right, Ray Ferraro coming up. Ray will join us in about 15 minutes. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, race coming up in about 15 minutes on the Leafs going 2-2 two and two on the Western trip. 1-1 one one over the weekend. They got Winnipeg here Wednesday night, then at Winnipeg on Saturday. Then they break for the All-Star game. And uh, the coaches were announced. You know, there's co-captains. They're doing it up pretty large. Like, it's, it's going to be exciting to see what happens once the All-Star game gets to Toronto. I'm sure you guys are being asked all the time. You got tickets. You guys going down. Anyone hook it up? We'll see um, as we get closer to that event. But uh, race coming up on the Leafs. Corey Perry to Edmonton. Patrick Waugh to the Islanders. There's a lot to get in there. And we're still looking back on the NFL weekend. And Nicky Dunlap. That might be my boy moving forward. Him and Ludwig. Nick and yeah. Ludwig you know could be my sad? two picks. I talked to Bobby Weeks a couple hours ago, and I said, does that money stay in, like, trust for this kid? He goes, no, it gets no. nothing. And I'm like, that's a joke. What? That's a joke, Dude, man. Dude, I'll give you the joke. What about his caddy? His caddy should be getting ten percent of one point five million. Dude, his caddy just walked around for four days for nothing. Nothing. That's a that is ridiculous. He, I know. Got to find. He a should way have an it. option. He could turn pro right after get the money. I, that exactly. I agree with. If you win it retroactively, give me the cash instead. Bazudin Howard or whatever his name is. That he got guy, first place money. He gets one point five. He yes, didn't even win the ridiculous. tournament. That's ridiculous. It's crazy. I'm but sorry. now he gets to go pro, which he has to. Because in order for him to be in all the elevated events and all that, he's got to be pro. Oh, he was coming out like saying, I don't know, I can't leave Dude, my guys at Bama. You are he's gone. He's out of there. He's gone. See you Bandits. later. <laughs> all right, hour two coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4.